Hey there everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to Imagination Tech. So in my opinion, the gold standard for capturing HD FPV videos is still the GoPro Hero. Whether it's the latest Hero 11 Black or, you know, even something older like the Hero 6. Um, unfortunately, it's not always practical and it's uh, also not always affordable because um, as, and especially when you're flying out and you're risking your, your GoPro in uh, your, your freestyle flights and crashing or maybe if you're doing long range and you risk the chance of losing your drone completely, including the, you know, the GoPro Hero on that drone. So the Insta360 Insta came up with the Insta360 Go, which was great because it was affordable around $200 but it had the problem of a uh, non-replaceable lens. So once you scratch it, you it's basically junk and you have to replace it or you know, they would charge you $100 just to have the whole thing replaced. Uh, the Insta360 GO 2 did have a um, you know, replaceable lens, but it was a lot more expensive than the, the, than the first one. It's, I think it's around $300. So um, there have been other you know, cheap, HD cameras which were really really good like the Runcam Thumb and all of its iterations uh, the Runcam Thumb Pro, Runcam Thumb Pro V2 and these are all good cameras um, but today I'm going to be looking at something similar to Runcam Thumb but actually a lot more cheaper this is the Hawkeye 4K Thumb and I got it for just over $60 and I'll, later I'll show you how uh, you can buy something like this because this thing retails at 68.99 without the ND16 filter and 73 something, uh, 73.29 I think uh, for something with a ND filter. And today I'm going to show you my first impressions and my review of the Hawk i 4K thumb. Stay tuned. First of all, thank you to Maker Fire. I had ordered this less than two weeks ago and now here it is on my desk and I really wanted to shoot a quick video about this and show you what's inside. So I got the Hawkeye 4K thumb package which came with the ND filter. It's an ND16 unfortunately, unlike the Runcam Thumb version 2, Runcam Thumb 2 v Pro or whatever that is, <laughs> uh, which came with three filters. This one just has one and this is the only kind available which uh, which is an ND16 unfortunately if you wanted to have something darker for really bright days like an ND32 uh, you're out of luck but uh, we'll see we got some documentation which is in Chinese and I'll probably never read that okay so it comes in English as well uh, with diagrams of what everything does uh, and uh, QR codes for the manual both the full manual and the uh, stable software for the Hawkeye which is basically just the gyro flow. We have the Hawkeye, lots of stuff in this uh, little package. So we have the remote for controlling our settings, video cable to RCA jack. Th this is used with the uh, type C to video cable, which uh, goes here on the side. And you can connect this to um, like uh, if your if you're fat shark or if your FPV monitor has a video in plug you can use that or you can use this and you can connect it to your tv it also comes with another type c wonder, wonder what this is it says dji balance plug for i believe this is for 6s and you can see that there are two pins and it only goes up to the fifth pin which is i think for 4s or yeah this would just be for 4s and that's because the hawk i 4k thumb only takes up to 23 volts or you know, around 5S voltage, the 4S plug, and finally a 3S plug as well. So uh, depends on what what battery you're going to be using this for. You can just uh, plug them onto the appropriate uh, balance plug of your battery and then just uh, plug the other side to your Hawkeye thumb. Taking a look at the back of the Hawkeye thumb 4K, you have uh, the connector for your remote control and your connector, which, uh, which is for your power, ground, video, and trigger so you can use this as an fpv camera and you can also trigger recording by one of your uarts so we will get into more detail about this later on if you got the package with the nd filter all you need to do is unscrew this with a counterclockwise motion and then just screw on the nd16 filter 
and it you know it screws on quite securely i think um probably if you do a hard crash it might uh, it might eject but um i think that's uh for you know for normal flights um that should be that should stay on there pretty well over on the side you have the micro sd card slot and i don't know if i'm just lacking in dexterity but uh, i had a little bit of difficulty pushing the, the sd card in with just my hand so you probably need something to push it with but uh, once you push it in it stays there and there's also this uh this sd card you know ejection protector i guess i don't know i forgot what it's called but uh it, it prevents your sd card from flying off in case of a crash or whatever or um but yep it just provides additional friction or additional you know coverage for your uh, sd card but it's not really that uh that hard to overcome so in case of a crash there is still a risk that your sd card is going to get ejected so here i have my 6s battery i just plugged it in and it beat uh beat three times and the red light is on uh, you can press um, press OK, and if the LED is flashing, that means it's recording. And press it again, and you hear those beeps, and it's now stopped. Holding the button for two seconds allows you to switch between uh, different modes. So with red, you have 2.5K at 16.9, shooting at 50 frames per second. If you get this uh, blue one, that's 1080p at 50 FPS. If you get this purple one, it shoots at 2.5K at a 4.3 aspect ratio at 50 frames per second. So their claim is that this is one of the lightest HD cam you can put on your quad at 15.5 grams. And actually it's around 17.5 grams, which is still light, but not as light as they are claiming to be. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I had any FPV monitor or goggles that could take uh, a 3.5 millimeter audio cable or video cable. So we are going to have to make do with this really, really old TV that I still, we still have lying around the house. And I have it connected to TV by the RCA input over here. And using the remote, you can press the middle button for you know, start recording or set all of these uh, settings. Resolution is set at 2.5K. By the way, uh, if you're using gyro floats, it's, it's gonna be better to use uh, 4.3 aspect ratio because that would give you more pixels. Um, there's also a no gyro feature, but um, why, why would you use that? So you probably just wanna stick to at 2.5K, 50 frames per second, 4.3 or 16.9. And then you can also set it to loop recording, but we probably don't want that. The wide dynamic range is set is, is set to on. Exposure is is for exposure compensation. Audio is on. And there's even a time lapse mode. And there's also a sp the metering mode that, that your camera is going to use. But if it's set to spot, it's just going to use whatever the light values on the exact dead center spot. And you have your center weighted, which is you know somewhere around the center. The average should be the whole average of your uh, of your image. So we probably just let's keep this all on, you know, on the defaults. Auto recording is set to off, but you can also set it to turn on as soon as you give it power. Probably also a good idea, but uh, we'll just keep it on for now. Well, if you want a fixed frame rate or electronic shutter is set to you know, you know probably set to, set it to auto but we could, we'd, we'd probably change this to 160 in the future so pressing on the left will give you the other system settings like date time auto power off beep sound language and it does come in a lot of different languages if you don't speak english as your first language frequency this is either 50 or 60 60 hertz depending on your electricity i guess tv mode is PAL or NTSC TV ratio is yeah 69 or 43. Surprisingly, all of the I mean the other camera settings are here like ISO color white balance. Um, and I say surprisingly because the shutter, if you remember the shutter uh, shutter speed is set here. Usually I set uh, when I when I'm using a GoPro I usually just set it to 100 or 200 max 400 or 800 depending 
how late it is in the day or how dark it is but I'll probably set that to 100 next time um, color is just uh, what kind of color you know this is just a gimmicky kind of uh, setting white balance unfortunately is not very you know helpful in terms of naming but uh, we'll have to check it out next time white balance all lock uh, this is just an on off setting so I'm not sure uh, denoise is also an on off setting and FOB surprisingly is set to small um, this surprisingly because this camera boasts 170 degree FOV and yet it, the, the default is set to small so we'll set that to large next time but for now we'll keep it at stock. Image rotation I guess is if you're mounting, uh, if you're mounting it a different way aside from the, 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 the regular way of uh, mounting horizontally. Um, this probably will just uh, have it auto adjust. So yeah, n none of these uh, settings are particularly special. So aside from that, you really don't need much uh, in the way of uh, setting things up on the Hawkeye 4K thumb. So uh, you know, as, long, as, as soon as you've set your uh, resolution and your frame rate and your aspect ratio, you're probably good to go. And you just need to mount this to your, um, to your quad. Now it's time to mount our Hawkeye 4K thumb to our Cinebot 30. And at the time of this video, there were no, no mounts available on Thingiverse or anywhere. And I tried messaging Hawkeye, I tried posting and uh, commenting on their social media, but uh, didn't really get a response. So I had to whip something quickly up in Fusion 360. I printed a couple of prototypes until I had this uh, design that I was uh, really happy with. And here it is on my Cinebot 30. Um, I hope you appreciate all of the effort and time that uh, I put into making this video because at the time of this video, there were no STLs available on Thingiverse or anywhere. So uh, do consider becoming one of my Patreons or maybe sending me some coffee money via my coffee link. Both are down in the description below. First, let's try out the low light capabilities of the Hawk i 4K thumb. And here uh, on the extreme end, it's uh, actually evening already and there's, there's absolutely no light aside from the light from the lights and lampposts. So you can see here that in the dark areas, you can see how much noise it's, uh, it's generating. And you probably aren't going to fly this uh, this dark or this late, um, but at least it gives you an idea how much uh, noise there will be in if you're flying through thick canopy or a similar situation. Comparing it with the FPV camera on the Cinebot 30, which is a Cadex Rattel, the Rattel actually has uh, you know very good low light capabilities. Um, what you're seeing here with the Hawk Eye 4K thumb uh, image is actually closer to what your eye would see uh, when you're walking at night. So here it is on my first flight and it's a bright sunny afternoon and there, there's definitely some cloud cover going on but uh, there's also you know, direct sunlight on the, on the streets below so you can see those bright areas as well as the dark, uh, dark areas underneath that uh, little forest in the park. So here up above the canopy you can see that it's, it's, uh, it's shifting its exposure because I'm set to auto exposure but you can fix this in um, in the settings you can fix this to fix this to a fixed shutter and a fixed ISO so um, some people have said that uh, the image quality doesn't look as good as the Runcam Thumb or the Thumb Pro or the V2 so I don't have any of those cameras so I can't really make a fair comparison but yes uh, the, the, the good thing that this Hawkeye 4K thumb going on for it is the ability to set the shutter and the ISO so I think that it still has a leg, leg up on those uh, other cameras it's definitely not going to be at the level of the GoPro but here on the stock settings you can see how it transitions from the bright areas to the dark areas um, quite quick in, in fairness so here uh, around the bend there's also good it's, it's struggling with the bright background area and the, and the dark tree which is in the shadow so uh, those are some of the limitations that you can see but uh, maybe we can see if we can call you know set this to a fixed shutter and a fixed ISO and then um, see what we can do in with color grading so again uh, this was shot in 2.5k um, 4.3 at 50 fps and that gave me the maximum uh, pixels that I could get in 2.5k but it, it also, it's also available at uh, 4k at uh, 16.9 but only until 30 uh, up to 30 fps so if you're looking for 50 fps unfortunately you want you're not going to have any gyro data uh, when you're shooting 4k uh, at, at, at 50 fps 
and I'm using the MD16 filter here as well so it's quite it's quite good and this is also a stabilized image uh, I use gyroflow there are some recommended settings which I'll probably just post uh, as an overlay or down in the description below so check that out is that's how you are going to get uh, the best uh, stabilized footage from this Hawkeye 4K thumb. Here's another flight in overcast weather. This time I'm using 4K 30fps and I've also color graded the image to make it look as nice as I could. Though it's an overcast day so the sky is pretty much blown out. But uh, you can see this, it really has nice details in the trees and in the shadows and the houses. So I got a Hawkeye 4K thumb for just $63 through Maker Fire and I used what they call Maker Fire Smiles to get myself $10 off from its uh, retail price of around $73 with the MD16 filter. And to get Maker Fire Smiles, you just need to sign up and you get some points. Your birthday gets you some more points. Follow them on social media, it gets you more points. And purchasing uh, from Maker Fire gets you even more points. So it's like uh, $1, uh, one Maker Smile point for every dollar that you spend. But if you don't have enough Maker Smiles yet, you can always use my link down below in the description with uh, my coupon code which I'll overlay down here uh, and that'll give you 5% off on your purchase. So who exactly is this Hawkeye 4K thumb for? Now this is uh, at $60, you know, you really can't match that price. And the, the pro settings, the pro camera settings really, you know, put it uh, a no just a notch you know, or maybe at par with the Runcam Thumb Pro. Um, so it's really great if you're flying long range or if you're risking you're flying a risky flight over water At least you know you don't stand to lose a lot of money if you ever lose your uh, Lose your camera. So at $60, $70, it's not going to be equivalent to losing like a $400 GoPro, right? It's also lightweight. So if you're doing long range, it's uh, great because it's not gonna weigh your quad down. It's just 17.5 grams by my measurement you know, with, the, with the micro SD card. So that's really, really light. It's not gonna you know put a strain on your battery. It's not gonna put a strain on your motors. So this is great for long range cruisers, uh, for cinematic flyers. Probably not so much for the freestyle because. I don't trust this uh, plastic housing to, you know, to withstand a lot of uh, a lot of abuse. Probably if you're doing freestyle above grass or in the forest, that's okay. But uh, probably not for for bandos over concrete or over cement. I hope you appreciate this video. Uh, I've spent a lot of time uh, covering all of this and also created a custom STL for the Cinebot 30 mount. If you are not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button so this video goes out to a lot more people. And do consider becoming one of my Patreons um, and I'll probably you know, release a color grading guide. It's just gonna be a simple color grading guide for my Patreons only. All right, so um, I'm going to leave you at that. It's uh, quite windy. There's a super typhoon here, super typhoon Betty, also internationally Mawar. Uh, it's quite windy, so I'm gonna head back inside where it's nice and warm and have some lunch. All right, so I'm going to, to leave you with that. As always, keep building and keep flying.